All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I have started recording, so um, if you want to watch this later, it will be up on the Canvas Weather Service YouTube by the end of the day. Um, and I'll stop my screen share. So Tyler, if you want to share your screen, you can go ahead and do so. Um, for all of our attendees, Tyler is a meteorologist at AccuWeather, and he'll be giving our briefing today. Um, and then I'll just let Tyler take it away once he gets everything figured out on his end. Yep, let me just get the screen shared. Oh. Okay, you should be able to start sharing. Perfect. Okay. Let me turn my camera on. I have a dual setup here because of um, actually working from home. Um, and they gave me an actual desktop uh, to use instead of a laptop, which is very nice. So. Thank you for having me. Um, we'll do a quick start of radar and then we'll kind of take a look at what's going on for the roughly the next um, 10 days or so. Um, starting off with, with the radar, really the only big thing that is going to be um, on here is, is Tropical Storm Beta. Um, with that in, so I was just going cruising Twitter right before this and someone, apparently there's comparisons or someone's making the claims it's like Harvey, but it's not given this thing is widely spread out in the open versus uh, Harvey, which is more compact and more um, had heavier rain. This is, you see some of the outer bands reaching uh, San Antonio and Austin, Texas. Um, and you have rain reaching all the way up to uh, St. Louis. So that's kind of going to continue over the next, um, really the next 24, 36 hours as beta slowly approaches the coastline of, um, of Texas here. Mm, sorry for that. Um, so going on, we take a look at what's currently going on uh, in terms of what temperature-wise, everything is, is going on, we've, we've essentially um, had a frost, or had a freeze, I should say, down in New York, Pennsylvania, Mount Pocono, records were sent, um, or set, I should say, in like Glen Falls, uh, New York, just north of Albany here. Uh, for the most part, much of the interior Northeast that got down closer towards um, that freezing mark have, have rebounded, what, so it's almost 1030 in many places are in the uh, in the 40s now. So that, that's good to see. And you know, it's, uh, a lot of the winds are late to variable and not really existent. Um, we're going to spend some time here on uh, the satellite to see what's going on currently right now. Um, there are several features to watch. You have weak cold front, uh, moving through the upper Midwest into the Central Plains that has associated with some showers across Nebraska here, and we'll set this up for the last two and a half hours. Um, you see Beta down off the Texas coastline, and then you see Teddy off on the far right-hand side, which we will take a look at later, um, going to bypass Bermuda and head towards Atlantic Canada. It was interesting um, to note that you do see some 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 smoke and some ash, really smoke, uh, moving southward across uh, New England this morning. Looks like over the next few hours it might just break up um, as it heads southward. But a lot of the smoke um, it appears is stuck in the plains in in the upper Midwest. Um, St. Louis looks beyond the edge of that and it really northward into Canada in terms of that. Let's go back and we can take a look at what Teddy looks like and we can take a look what all these are. Uh, what looks like every single one is done over the last two hours or so. And for the most part, it looked like earlier that Teddy was going to probably strike. Bermuda looks like it's going to do a glancing blow as it stays well off uh, the coast of uh, Bermuda. It's going to, right now it's a category two, and it's going to remain a hurricane strength um, today, tomorrow, and it's going to gradually lose its wind intensity, but it's still going to be a powerful storm. 
um, and it's going to, and we'll, once we take a look at the models, we can see hopefully some interaction in terms of what Teddy is going to do. Um, but really what Teddy is going to do is bypass Bermuda and it's going to really impact Atlantic Canada directly from the south. It's not going to be a glancing blow that we've seen at times. It's going to be a uh, full that's going to plow right through um, as a as a extra tropical storm that has hurricane force winds, uh, especially in Nova Scotia uh, and New Brunswick. And that's, uh, and I can actually go take a look at what we're actually latest forecast in terms of that. Um, you can see gusts up to 100 miles per hour across coastal Nova Scotia and uh, New Brunswick in terms of that. And then some of the gusts up to 80 miles per hour in terms of uh, Labrador, Newfoundland, Labrador. And so that's really going to take us through the midweek in terms of that. Um, we can backtrack and take a look at what uh, beta is looking like through the last hour or so. And it's slowly heading towards the coastline of um, Texas. We're looking at landfall somewhere between, uh, somewhere around uh, Port O'Connor. So that falls between Houston up to the north and Corpus Christi off to the west there. What is, <clears throat> and we'll get into some of the details in a bit, but uh, in terms of what's going to happen with beta, but you see all the, the, the convection firing up way far away from the center and kind of going to be help feeding that rainfall across uh, Louisiana and make it into much, much uh, farther inland into Texas um, in regards to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and take a look at the 500 pattern here, um, look at the height anomalies. Um, your GFS models are on the top, the European are on the bottom, the ensembles, the GEFS is on the top left, the European ensembles are on the bottom right. Um, so you see Teddy very easily, um, dead smack in the center, uh, just near Bermuda. And then you have, you have Ridge um, that's over, <clears throat> that's poking through the Great Lakes um, and whatnot. And then you have some weak heights and you kind of can see where, where Beta is located um, with the models in terms of the 500 pattern. As you progress forward, um, Teddy, runs right through into Atlantic Canada. Um, beta runs right into the, the belly of the upper level ridge that has, has kind of extends back towards the southwest, which I believe is basically this whole summer, the, south, the southwest ridge has just been anchored there and refuses to move um, in regards to that. What we want to note is as Teddy heads towards Atlantic Canada, it's the it's the trough that's coming through uh, south of Alaska that we have to watch as we head into the weekend. That's going to bring some relief to uh, coastal Pacific Northwest. Some rain will make it and impact some of the fires in uh, Oregon and uh, especially in Washington, but really not going to make much of a difference um, for the California uh, wildfires going on there. Um, but watch what happens as that comes in. You have the extent of your ridge extending from the south, southwest United States all the way up into the plains. Um, and what to notice is beta by this point is kind of still meandering through the um, lower Mississippi Valley into the deep south and starting to move towards the um, Tennessee Valley here by Friday, and then it, it kind of, it's going to continuously lose its intensity. Um, in reality, beta is really a big heavy rainmaker going forward. Not really much with the wind compared to some of the other, other systems that we have seen over the last month or so. Um, so by Saturday, really beta and the 500 pattern is kind of washed away. Um, we'll see what I'll show you at the, the surface what it's going to look like, but really it's it's going to be washed away. It's kind of still going to be meandering somewhere, Tennessee Valley, deep south, southeast, somewhere, somewhere in that range, as the trough that comes from 
the Gulf of Alaska comes into Pacific Northwest. Um, it's going to dive into the plains. Um, here, so the schedule I've been doing today is a long, a, one of our longing schedules. And we've been talking about this, um, this trough and how the GFS has been playing catch up to the European. And what you can really see is really the GFS is the most progressive out of the four here. Both the GEFS, European Ensembles, and even the European are all um, roughly in the same time frame of making it into the Midwest by late Sunday night. The GFS has already said, I'm out of the Midwest heading into the Ohio Valley. Um, when we typically get towards this time frame, the GFS tends to be a little bit uh, too progressive, too fast um, in these natures. So as we go through Monday and into Tuesday, what we're going to see is whatever's kind of left from beta um, in the Tennessee Valley, deep south, southeast, is likely it has the opportunity to interact with this upper level trough coming in. And we'll show it's really going to interact with the, a cold front going to come uh, marching eastward. Um, so that is going to finally plow through um, the east really at the end of uh, September. I can't believe in the next 10 days roughly it's the end of September, but that's where, that's where we are going forward. Um, and again, the GFS is probably the more progressive out of them um, as they, as out of the four, as the other three kind of keep the troughiness or the, the upper level trough back across the, um, the Midwest Mississippi Valley uh, into the Ohio and Tennessee Valley. So what that looks like at the surface going forward is we get to deal with terrific weather for at least the next five, six, seven days, largely because this area of high pressure that's over the Northeast can't really go anywhere because Teddy is coming up and Teddy is full steam ahead and it's going to block this high from really um, being able to move eastward. So what do we get? We get the nice sunny weather in terms of that. And that kind of extends all the way back through the plains. Um, you see Beta is going to make landfall sometime later this evening um, going forward. So you see, you see some of the outer fringes of Teddy on the, on the models here. Um, some rain could possibly make it into far east Maine, but that's probably about it. Um, rain from Beta will make it in, into the mid-Mississippi Valley, but as we go through, um, through Friday, you see rainfall. Uh, again, with the, with the tropical influence, the, it's going to be on the locally enhanced heavy side. Um, in terms of that across parts of the Tennessee Valley, the Southeast, the Deep South. Um, and it's really going to kind of meander around that area until something really picks it up. Um, in reality, it's that the upper level trough coming in that will finally start to move it um, as the cold front comes out of the Northern Plains through the Central Plains Midwest and you're able to tap into it and enhance the moisture. Um, I, talking about it in um, uh, products today. And I talked about how the, how beta is going to enhance rainfall along the front. And that's actually probably a good thing because let's see if I do this correctly. Over the last 14 days, it's been largely on the dry side across uh, much of the Northeast. I think you, you have roughly to go back the last 14 days, really, D.C., Baltimore, New York City, you all saw about an inch of rain around September 10th. Otherwise, it's been largely dry, I would say, from West Virginia through Maine. Um, so, and out of this, even though we had a kind of a wet end of August, beginning of September for many locations, if we were to go back the last 90 days, so that takes us through the middle of summer, we still have drought-like conditions here in central Pennsylvania and much of New England because, well, you just haven't been able to tap into any of the tropical moisture. So even though we got, were able to get some measurable rain in the first half of September, it really hasn't done much in the grand scheme of things over the last 90 days. 
So if we were to take a look at what this front does when it finally does come through um, late in the six to 10 day period, uh, it could bring some very beneficial rains to much of the region, um, Pennsylvania and to New England in that way that it would be very beneficial. This dry weather otherwise is very beneficial for harvesting crops. Um, just not here in Pennsylvania, but you talk of the corn belt, you talk about the spring wheat, you talk about soybeans, all that. This is great harvesting weather for them. Let's see if I do this correctly. Uh, we can take a look at what the, what the models are all kind of showing in the last five, in the six to 10 day realm. The GEFS, which <clears throat> we'll look at more than the deterministical models, um, is showing roughly about an inch, uh, give or take half an inch on either side for much of the uh, East Coast. The European will have to back up a little bit. It is showing uh, in terms of precipitation anomalies uh, in a good inch, inch and a half. Some places could get a little bit, maybe a little bit higher, um, much above normal precipitation from this front. Again, beta is going to be helping with that. Though I do looking at this, would point out that central Pennsylvania apparently is the bullseye of the ZOZ. Uh, ensembles from the European, which is probably not going to happen um, given our luck this summer. And finally, I will end with, uh, we'll head overseas over to the pond um, to where we have some interesting weather that's going to happen. Again, your GFS models are on the top, European and bottom on the right, the ensembles are on the hand side. Um, later this week, they're having their own version of a deep trough coming in. Um, and we can watch this in the upper level patterns here. By Wednesday, this deep trough really comes in. And in some places, once this deep trough really comes in, temperatures across the British Isles and into central, and really into Germany, are going to be below normal uh, for, a couple of, for a couple of days. Uh, temperatures could be held in the 50s across much of Germany. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and to Saturday potentially as well. So this deep trough here, what happens is it, typically what happens, what we see during the winter time in Europe is it, it, it swings in, gets essentially cut off when you, when you have the two ridges, one in Western Russia, one in the Atlantic, it kind of, it, it falls in between the two and then it kind of realizes it it overcompensates by dropping in and it really can't lead anywhere. So you kind of get some kind of cutoff to occur across uh, South Central Europe. So what does that lead to with this dropping, um, this dropping uh, trough down in here? And I realized one of my models did not load correctly. But that leads to um, a very active pattern for the British Isles through Italy, through Poland, and up through uh, Scandinavia during this time frame. Um, let this quickly load. And then um, we're, we're talking, uh, looking at least, I, say, I hate to say weak, but two minor windstorms uh, and also a heavy rain event. Um, for parts of Europe. So as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, as the trough is digging into the western half of Europe, you have two areas of low pressure, one in the North Sea, one coming into Ireland. And as it uh, sweeps through, today's runs don't look very impressive, uh, but there's potential for some, some gusty winds as this low kind of dives into southern uh, United Kingdom. And as this low in the North Sea ramps up as it heads up towards uh, Norway, it could bring some heavy rain to southern Norway, um, which given the, the terrain there will just lead to some places getting four to six inches of rain. Um, but as this second low kind of dives southward and kind of ends up somewhere between northern France and northeast Germany, um, you can see gusts of 50, 60 mile per hour largely probably across the coastal locations, but it's along the cold front that will happen that comes where you get the funky business 
down in Italy, the Alps, and then partially up into Western Poland. With the Alps, you're going to see a lot of upslope happening as it taps into the Western Mediterranean. Um, so you see on the, the French Alps side, up, up in Switzerland on Thursday, you see a lot of heavy precipitation. You see thunderstorms on the northern uh, side of uh, the southern side of the Alps, really in Po Valley, um, where Genoa is on the coast here. You see the thunderstorms. That all moves through. So you have one wave um, coming through in terms of that pulling the rain away, and then you have a second storm kind of develops. So one wave kind of moves along and um, races out, and then you have a second wave that moves through. And so you could have around, you could have re really 72 hours of heavy rainfall across the Alps with some snow accumulating um, in the Alps. It already did that way back in August already. So it's really the Alps into Western Poland where there's the threat for heavy rainfall. Uh, and then you have the severe storm side of things across really central northern Italy and the Denmark Alps. So that's what's really going on across the pond there. And then really briefly in the West Pacific, um, we gained tropical storm dolphin uh, heading towards Japan. Um, finally for once in a long time that we have a, an easy storm to pronounce out there. Uh, in terms of a name. And so that's all I have for today. Thank you guys again for having me. Perfect, thank you so much, Tyler. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can use either the chat or the Q&A function. So I'll just let that sit for another minute or two. And then if not, then we can just go ahead and, and end this discussion. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Charles, for the comment. All right, if nobody has any questions, then I will go ahead and just end the meeting. Uh, thank you for everyone who was a attendee this week, and I hope to see you guys all next week at our next weather briefing. <laughs>